Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be talking about finding arithmetic mean using shortcut method. And uh, this is the video on request. Somebody asked me to show these calculations of shortcut method of finding arithmetic mean. Let me let me just go ahead and first of all discuss some basics about this particular method, and then I'll be moving ahead. So uh, fundamentally, when this particular method is used, this method is applicable when you are dealing with large numbers, when the number of the calculations are pretty big or uh, big figures are given probably numbers are in hundreds or something of that sort and uh, then you know uh, nowadays you you are using the calculators you're using computers like excel or python and all other programs so generally this method doesn't make much sense but definitely for understanding if uh, for statistical researchers mathematical statistical researcher the method becomes of extreme importance because they are into development of different methods uh now what what is the basis for this particular method i have already told about the property in my previous videos there is a property of arithmetic mean that sum of deviations of all observations from their mean is zero so what i'm trying to say is let us suppose there are two three numbers one two three these, these are the three numbers and if you find their x bar value that means their mean so their x bar value would be one plus two plus three divided by three and it will be six by Three and that will be equal to two, and uh, so this x bar becomes equal to two. And if you want to calculate, let's say x minus x bar, then it would be one minus two is equal to negative one. Then it will be two minus two that will be equal to zero, and that will be three minus two is equal to one. And if I sum these deviations, sum of x minus x bar, that is going to will become equal to zero. So this is the property of arithmetic mean. That's why it is called as a central figure that sum of deviations from the mean is zero. So this particular method of calculating arithmetic mean uses this particular property. So what we do is what are the different steps involved in uh, this particular method? So first thing is in the entire data set, you find a value from some, something which is sitting in the center and you call it an assumed mean. So generally this is the value which is falling somewhere at the center. Then you calculate, uh, like I have calculated, you know, x minus x bar. So this mean uh, in, in the, on the previous slide. So I have calculated x minus x bar. That means deviation of x from x bar. Here you are going to calculate this particular deviation from assumed mean. That means x minus a. This is what you're going to calculate. Then you're going to find average of those particular deviations. If you are using with frequency distribution, then you can use this particular uh, uh, formula to find out the deviation and their average and then at the end what you are going to do is you are going to definitely use this particular formula so you see the rest of the formula remains same more or less f x divided by some f so instead of x i'm using x minus a since i'm subtracting and finding the deviation from a i'm to add that particular assumed mean here and that is how i'm going to do that if you want to replace x minus a by some letter called small d, which is also called as deviation, then simply you can replace x minus a by small d. And here I have already given an explanation. And you can use in the formula instead of x minus a, you can simply use small d. Uh, we can also involve step deviation method. So if what, what happens in a step deviation method is generally, uh, you know, we if there is a common factor of d then we divide all the things by that common factor i and uh, the formula gets modified to this so the simple logic is pretty uh, like if you have uh, d values given something and you calculate these values like 5 10 5 and then there is a negative 10 and there is negative 15 then you can see that there is a common factor called 5 so i would become equal to 5 and uh, you can calculate now d dash would be equal to d divided by i and this d dash value would simply will become 15 by 5 which is 3 15 10 by 5 which becomes 2 5 by 5 becomes 1 and that becomes minus 2 and minus 3 and you know so this becomes d dash and then later on you can multiply it with common factor called 5. i'll be doing all these calculations in the example so let us go ahead and understand it through one particular example so this is a continuous frequency distribution example which i'm taking right now so i have been given with certain class of values so it is like 20 to 25 is the first class and then i've got something called 25 to 30 then 30 to 35 so all these are exclusive intervals which are given to me 35 to 40 
and I've got something called 40 to 45. Then of course, 45 to 50. And then I have got last class 50 to 55. Uh, so this is the class of values which has been given. And uh, then I have been given with the frequency. So I'm going to write F here as the frequency. So this first class has a frequency of 10. Next class has a frequency of 12 and 8 to 35. There are 20 repetitions in here. 11 values are here. 4 are here and 5 are here. So I've been given with the frequency. Now I want to calculate arithmetic mean using, uh, uh, I would say, the assumed mean method and uh, I'll be subsequently applying the step deviation method with it. So if you are dividing it by a common factor, that becomes a step deviation method. So uh, since I know the mechanism already, before moving ahead, I need to calculate the mid value. So mid value and uh, mid value, all of you understand, will be lower limit plus upper limit divided by two. So I'll be calling this particular mid value as X. So that is X. So the first value, of course, uh, is going to be 20 plus 25, which is 45. Uh, divided by 2 and that becomes 22.5 and you can simply calculate it right the second is going to be 25 plus 30 then we can be, makes it 55 divided by 2 and that becomes 27.5 third mid value is going to be 30 plus 35 that makes it 65 divided by 2 and here you're going to get 32.5 and then it will be 35 plus 40 that makes it 75 divided by 2 and that is simply going to be 37.5 and then you have 40 plus 45 that makes 95 divided by 2 and that becomes 42.5 and then you have uh, something or 45 plus 50 so that makes it so this will be 85 by 2 this will be 95 by 2 of course and that becomes 47.5 and then 50 plus 55 that make, makes it uh, 105 divided by 2 and that is going to be 52. So I have all the mid values. Uh, I'm going to change the color of the pen to make you understand that uh, what uh, you know I'm going to do. So since I'm using an assumed mean method here, so what I'm going to do is I'll find a central figure and conveniently it is 37.5 here. And I'm going to calculate call this particular value as A. That means the assumed mean. Now there are possibilities when you are going to find uh, even because here it is pretty simple. I have seven values, so the central figure was easy to find, but sometimes you have even values, six. So you can take any of the values assumed mean. Even you can try by taking first value as assumed mean. But if you are uh, conveniently placed in such a position that you can easily find a central value, then I will always advise to find the central value. Now, what I will do is I will calculate here the deviation from the assumed mean. So here I'm calculating X minus A. You can refer to the previous slide. A is 37.5 as already been mentioned. And that I'm going to call as small d. So the first value is going to be definitely 22.5 uh, minus 37.5. And uh, that is going to give me uh, minus. So if you if you calculate it, it is going to give me minus 15 somewhere, right? And the same way you can calculate the second value, which is going to be 27.5 minus 37.5, and that is going to be come out to be minus 10. And the third is going to be 32.5 minus 37.5, and that is going to be negative 5. Then of course this particular value will be 37.5 minus 37.5 and that is going to give you the zero. And same way if you calculate it is going to be 42.5 minus 37.5, which is going to give you five. Then you have 47.5 minus 37.5 and that is going to give you 10. And then you have 52.5 minus 37.5 and that is going to give you a 15. So I've calculated D already. Now I'm going to, from assumed mean, I'm going to involve with that deviation method also. So you can see that all Ds, I have minus 15, minus 10, minus 5, 0, 5, 10, and 15. 
So I know that there is a common factor called D dash, uh, or I, I is a common factor which I'm representing, and you can see that all these values can be divided by five. So I'm going to calculate D dash, and I'm going to calculate it by D by I, and that is simply is going to be minus 15 divided by five, and that is going to be negative three, then minus 10 divided by 5 is going to be negative 2. Minus 5 divided by 5 would be 1. 0, this will remain. Uh, so you're going to be, it is going to be 0 divided by 5. And uh, that is going to give you a 0, of course. And then you have 5 divided by 5. That makes it 1. And then you have 10 divided by 5 becomes 2. And you have next number 15 divided by 5, that becomes 3. So if you recall the formula, the formula exactly for arithmetic mean, if I'm using a uh, step deviation and assume mean method, so that is actually A plus sum of F of D dash divided by N number of values multiplied by I. So I need to calculate F D dash here. So I'll simply be calculating F of D dash. So we can see that here, F D dash, this is F. This is D dash right here. This is D dash right here. So let me calculate F D dash, and it is going to be negative 3 multiplied by 10, and that gives me minus 30. Minus 2 multiplied by 12, that gives me minus 24. You have 1 multiplied by 8. So here it is 1. So it is negative 1. I'm sorry. That's a mistake, right? So it is going to be negative 8. Then the next number is 0 multiplied by 20, then becomes 0. 11 multiplied by 1 becomes 11. <clears throat> 4 times 2 becomes 8. And 5 times 3 becomes 50. Now, right at the bottom, I'm going to calculate sum of FD dash. And if you sum all these values, it will be 15 plus 11 plus 8. And then these numbers are to be subtracted from here. And that is going to give you a minus 28. Right? So that, that you can easily calculate because this uh, sum is going to be, uh, you know, minus 62. That is what I'm going to get. 54 and 8. And this is going to be, this, this sum is going to be 34. So and if you just add these two numbers right here, 62 plus 34 minus 62 plus 34 then uh, you're going to get something like called minus 28 so okay let me plug in the values now and i'll change the color of the pen just so that you can understand it better so a the assumed mean is 37.5 so i'm going to plug in 37.5 plus sum of fd dash which is negative 28 so i'm going to plug in negative 28 here divided by n so if you see what is n n is actually summation of f so this this capital n so i'm just going to correct it is capital n or also called as sum of f so what is the sum of f so 10 plus 12 plus 8 plus 20 plus 11 plus 4 plus 5 so sum of f here or i'll write it capital n is 70 70 sum to divide it by 70 Multiply it by common factor i, which is equal to 5 here. Sum to multiply it by 5. So if you do some calculations here, you're going to get 37.5 minus 28 divided by 70 times 5. And you just do some calculations and you're going to get something called 35.5. So that is the arithmetic mean or x bar, whatever you want to call it, using a step deviation and assumed mean method collector. Thank you very much.